scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Discernment. Discernment. Do you know why you need to discern? Because men are men. But you must be able to discern the grace that works in their lives above and beyond their humanity. You may be married to your wife and then God has granted her grace to be prophetic. That there is a grace from her. If you can look beyond her being just your wife, there is something God can use her to bring to your life. Familiarity has destroyed many people from receiving the prophetic from vessels. Number two honor honor this is a house of honor this is not new to you honor when you read the same second kings chapter 4 from verse 10 to 13 second kings 4 10 to 13 haven't discerned that he's a holy man of God and a prophet of God. She did not stop there. She made a proposal to her husband. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let's set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be wherever he comes to us, he shall turn in hither. 11. He says, and it fell on a day that he came and he turned to the chamber and he lay there. They did this continually, verse 12. And he said to Gehazi, now this always happens. Every time honor, I have taught you that honor is the key to access. This woman did not even make any request. She just honored the man, having perceived that he was a man of God. And the prophet said, no, it's against the law of honor that this family keeps showing me honor without something coming from me to them. He called on Gehazi, his servant. He said, call the Shunammite woman. And when they had called her, she stood before him. 13. He said, she said unto him, he said unto him, say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Would you want me to speak to the king or to the captain of the host? And she said, I dwell among my own people. And if you read onwards, you will see that Gehazi now told Elisha that I notice as wealthy as this family is, there is a bot in this family. They have not enjoyed the miracle of fruitfulness. And he said, that's right. You will never see the woman asking for a child. The woman did not ask for a child. She only honored a prophetic vessel and the prophet said, no, I must search what is not working in your life. And the prophet on his own, he said, by this time, accord, no, 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 according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And it happened as the prophet prophesied. There are many things, let me tell you, you will not need to ask men and women of God to pray for you for if you understand discernment and honor. Now, I know that, again, I always like to balance teachings like this because many times when we men of God find teachings like this, we press it into people. Don't come and meet a man of God empty-handed. It is scriptural, but it is not a burden. It should be by revelation and delight. Knowing that you see joy uh, and honor are principles that release the prophetic from the bowels of the spirit but it is not by manipulation i've been surprised at times where people want to see me and they're afraid and saying okay we we couldn't see you because there's nothing in our hand i said what is what's the meaning of that no 
Honor is not just about giving things. It's holding somebody in high esteem as touching what God has done. It is good to honor people as much as God has blessed you, vessels of, of glory, but not to put yourself under, um, uh, under duress. And I, I, no man of God who loves God and is a man of integrity and serious with this work will tell you if you don't have something, you cannot come to me. No, freely we have received. The Bible says freely to give. Are we together? So discernment and then honor. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. This was Saul. They were going to look for their donkey, remember? And then the Bible says, Behold, the servant said, There is in this city a man of God. And the Bible calls him an honorable man. All that he saith co surely comes to pass. Now, let us go thither. Per adventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. And Saul said to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? For the bread is spent in our vessel, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? That was a limitation. He said, listen, listen, if, if this man has that level of credibility, then it must have come through deep interaction with the spirit. And we should be able to carry something that represents an expression of honor. And then Saul said to his servant, but behold, if we go, go to verse 8, please. Verse 8. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver and I will give to the man to tell us our way. And that, that became what they had and they left. And you know the rest. Through that honor as they got there, before he would even arrive, to tell, let me tell you this, look up please. No genuine man of God who has been helped by God and is determined to do ministry with integrity will sit down and pressure people over their resources. Do you know that while they got to the gate of Samaria, as soon as they saw Samuel, he did not look at their hand. He said, go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. It was not about the seed. It was about honor to give him access. Hallelujah. There are many, many people who are very greedy and very stingy. They can go to men of God. Men of God will pray for them, do everything, even feed them and give them money. And some of them are very wealthy people. You see, and they, they cannot, the, 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 the law of honor, they don't practice it. It's wrong. It's not about me. I'm not saying you should give me money. Believe me. But I'm telling you that it is a principle, learn it as a spiritual principle. You want to provoke the grace upon an anointed vessel, have the discernment to always honor. There are people who want to go and see politicians. You are not even sure of what they will tell you. Some of them will buy a car, some of them will buy a house and say, I have five estates, uh, honorable, I just thought that, uh, uh, let me just give you a recharge card. And the recharge card is one estate. And they come to a church and they see the church struggling. And yet the man is anointed. Nothing to be ashamed of, he's growing. And they know that with, with a simple check, and it will not mean anything to them. There are people who can build churches 10 churches at a go and it will not scratch their, fi their finances and yet they will come and meet a man of God and say I hope you have time because I, my problem I need one hour and the man says okay I'm listening to you oh am I going to do this he says go am I going to and then they go and get blessed and they say thank you and they spend their money on psychophants and ignore those that were used by God to bless them there is a balance while on one hand the assignment of not of priesthood is not tax collection we are not there sent by God to be collecting money from people but I have to educate you as touching doctrine make it a principle and a point of duty that as much as God grants you grace do not go and see a man of God with a proven track record who you trust the investment of the spirit upon his life empty-handed it is spiritual carelessness I never, God is my witness. I have never and I will never go and meet any of the fathers of faith and just go and meet them and say, even if I stumble across them by mistake. No, I will not do that. It is not human worship. 
you don't know what leaves the spirit of people when they are happy go and ask isaac why will isaac i hope you know that the 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 goat or the ram that they caught was isaac's own from his farm that he ate so he already had it but he said go leave the one in my house go let it let it let it compel something from you make venison such as i love bring it to me i want to bless you let me tell you the truth as much as i don't i'm not really into you know money money all of these things it's not it's none of my business with i don't put people on, under pressure but i tell you the truth by god there are sacrifices and there are things that people have done for me i have found myself even to my surprise blessing them and prophesying to them from the depth of my heart and subconsciously paying attention to their needs as busy as i am you see i'm i'm, I'm being sincere and honest with you I love everybody, but you'll be making a mistake believing I give everybody equal attention. It's not even something that I plan. There are people because of the depth of their honor, their sacrifice from their heart. There are families that if they call on me, even if it's in tears, I will get up and make sure I respond to them because of the level of spiritual sacrifice. It is the same thing with us men of God. Everybody can call on God, but it looks like God is hearing others and not hearing others. The key is sacrifice. I would be lying to you if I don't teach you this. Native doctors will not even hear you. Go out. When you, your trouble really hits you, you will look for what to buy and bring for me. But in the church, we don't do that. But believers are becoming careless just because we are pointing imbalances here. I will not tell you what I'm not doing. In fact, as a principle, I will never stand up and go to any family, even if it's a family that looks up to me. It is a principle to always greet people at the gates with honor. Some of you, even your children, this law of honor has not worked in your life. You will go to a restaurant holding three children. They will stand outside while you are eating. You will finish and carry extra water and say, hey, let's go. This law of honor must, must work in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I will be disappointed if you have been in Koinonia and you claim to be connected here. And you have, I'm not saying to me, I wish I were not the one preaching this. You see, it's very difficult to tell the truth of this sort. Especially if you are the one who is, is you know, you are saying it in your own platform. But I ought to tell you the truth. When your hands are close to honor, your destiny will be close to access. honor you want to receive from prophetic vessels if you do not find them worthy of your attention then leave them in peace but for as long as you are determined to engage them respect what they represent and honor your way into the deepest bowels of the prophetic number three faith three rules of engagement from receiving from prophetic vessels number one discernment Number two, honor. Number three, faith. Faith means you have to believe that God is able to use them to speak to you. Second Chronicles 2020, we're wrapping up. 2020, Second Chronicles. They rose up early in the morning and they went into the wilderness of Tekoa. The Bible says, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat, stood and said hear me old koinonia and ye inhabitants of jerusalem he says believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established then believe he didn't just say listen believe his prophets so shall you prosper in john chapter 2 from verse 5 john chapter 2 from verse 5 the bible says the wedding in cana now wine had finished and they all came to jesus and the mother told them, he said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Verse 6, now he begins to speak. Reading to 8, and there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three frackings apiece. 7, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots. You want to see a miracle? Take a step of faith by believing in my word. Fill the water pot with water. 
ladies and gentlemen that was a huge risk and they filled them up to the brim obedience faith verse 8 now he takes it deeper he says now draw out as at the time you are drawing out what you are seeing is water but bear it and take the risk at my word be on your way to go to the governor do you know they will kill those people if that water did not turn to wine you know in those days they didn't forgive straight they would just hang them or kill them or do all kinds of things i'm sure those guys were moving and saying what is this now we came for reception or wedding that is not even our own this guy is now leading us to go and die for nothing listen to me whether you are naman or you are the one in need of an embarrassment to be averted from your wedding the moment you come to a prophetic vessel be ready to hear instruction and be ready to act there are times i have come here to give us prophetic instructions to fast to sow to listen and there are many people who have embraced it as touching the voice of god some of you here with simplicity of heart and meekness have received this prophetic voice as touching the grace of God and you have seen what it has happened but there are people who are too intellectual or too scientific or too rich or too wise in their own understanding you see when you are flying a plane you have to depend on the intelligence of the captain and the crew you are not at liberty as 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 gigantic as that plane or that ship is there is only one man that controls that flight and sometimes he can tell you we're about to approach turbulence so make sure you put on your seat belt please minimize any other thing if you are distributing food stop for the moment he knows what he's saying it is for you to believe sometimes even a minute or two after he's spoken you will not sense any bump and then all of a sudden it becomes bumpy because by reason of being pilot he has the privilege of sight and the privilege of all kinds of things within the cockpit there and you know that can help to direct him you are following and so you listen Africa hear me as much as we are trusting God to correct some of the sad things that are happening with the prophetic let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the West let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the East westernization made many people in the West and in Europe to crucify their prophets they came up with a point where they felt john knox what can you say em bounds what can you say charles g finney what can you say we have a government we have economists we have intellectuals and right now some of those regions are nationally barren of prophetic voices there are regions in the earth where there are no prophetic and apostolic voices because the people made it they sowed the seed of killing and destroying the prophetic Africa, I understand that many lives have been wrecked because of the mismanagement of the prophetic. I understand. I know that there are many people who have reason to communicate the prophetic barring of integrity. God is helping all of us. But I can tell you, this is a clarion call to Africa. We need to be careful. Nigeria, we need to be careful. Do not destroy your prophets. It is a trap. You owe it to pray for the prophets and pray for purity of grace, purity of perception, purity of character and truthfulness in serving God. But can I tell you, a nation, a church, a region that shuts down is prophetic has shut down a major advantage in their lives. I am a product of the prophetic. The fathers of faith have spoken over my life. I have watched the prophetic through my life lift and raise many people and chiefest of all we are saved by the word we are transformed by the word the word of God said it that if we pay attention to this we will be transformed we believed in that prophetic truth look what our lives have become we're about to pray because by this time tomorrow for someone in the name of Jesus for someone it is a literal tomorrow for someone it's a prophetic tomorrow meaning the seasons that you have left forget about what has gone wrong please rise up on your feet we're about to pray just a few minutes let's minimize moving up and down we just have a few minutes and we're done two prayer points tonight prayer point number one from the depth of your heart i'd like you to pray and cry unto god 
and say father i open up my heart to the prophetic as a system of advantage for my lifting for my rising for my dominion and for my excelling open up your mouth and pray i open up my spirit i open up my spirit to the prophetic dimension i believe in the power of the prophetic first the prophecy of scripture being the most sure word of prophecy we live by the word it is by the word we are built it is by the word we are established someone pray i contend for that prophetic dimension that comes with the word if someone praying let it be from the depth of your heart please no looking around your eyes on jesus and you pray i open up my spirit to the prophetic The prophetic, the more sure word of prophecy, and then anointed vessels as God has placed in my life with integrity and with honor to the word of God. Go ahead and pray. Lord, we open up our hearts to the prophetic the prophetic office and the operation of the prophetic hallelujah now before i speak over your life and i want you to be patient and receive it number two we are going to pray for the prophetic office ministry and the prophetic generally in nigeria and africa particularly we owe a responsibility to pray and say lord we declare number one redemption number two restoration number three glorification of the prophetic that every area of lapse and corruption and flesh we declare that it be pruned out by the dealings of god are we together now that god will raise in every region genuine prophetic and apostolic voices in your family in your church in every region that would dispense the prophetic with character with dignity with balance all the games that surround the prophetic let's drive it out of the body of christ in prayer all the imbalances and all the, the nonsense that you know the baggages that have come with flesh in administering the prophetic let's pray the mercy of god please open your mouth and pray Pray for men and women of God in Nigeria. Pray for men and women of God in Africa. Pray for men and women of God in Europe. Pray for men and women of God in America, Australia, everywhere your mind can take you to pray. Lord, sustain the prophetic. Sustain the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. Sustain the creative dimension of the prophetic let destinies not be aborted because of dishonor to the prophetic let confusion not remain in your body because of dishonor to the prophetic let darkness not fall upon us without eyes that see and warn without ears that hear and warn because of our pride in persecuting those you have gifted with grace pray Lord, we pray for pruning. Let there be judgment and pruning among the prophetic and the apostolic in Nigeria, in Africa. Walk on the character of men and women, they that bear the vessels of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, prune out every flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, childishness, immaturity, the mix of the prophetic with various shades of divination and extra biblical practices take it out of your body oh god but by all means preserve the prophetic by all means oh god and for your name's sake preserve the prophetic hallelujah my final word to the body of Christ, please hear me. There is no man of God and no woman of God, especially one called into the prophetic and the apostolic who should outgrow training. Let me repeat myself. Many of the nonsense that we experience in the body of Christ 
sometimes it is not an issue of sin it's just an issue of childishness are we together if you were a man and a woman of God listening to me following by way of rebroadcast or you are here let me challenge you no matter what height you attain please humble yourself to learn learn at the feet of those who know what they are doing let me tell you that the major problem with Africa in many African regions the apostolic voices that speak as fathers are still young people and we salute them for their diligence to rise but you see nations need fathers and fathers indeed a combination of experience and the length of years walking with God the Bible says woe unto any nation whose king is a child I'm not being sarcastic we have we've already acknowledged the great ministries in this nation and across there are many ministries that are led by children not just children in age but children in mind and some of these excesses are purely products of immaturity. Gifted people, but no character and emotional stability and maturity. So we keep, we, we desecrate the altar and bring reproach to the body of Christ because of lack of maturity. We must trust God for grace, for stability. Are we together? Stability in character as we dispense the prophetic. You are prophesying to people go and find out the rules of prophesying to people don't just say I saw and you call someone and you are describing explicit things in the presence of people you know what I'm talking about you are describing things that a ma this one is not the issue of sin it's about training and maturity there are rules to prophesying you don't just say everything you are seeing no the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Anything you are going to say that does not translate to edification and comfort, you can hide it, see the people privately. And then this God of mammon, bring money and I prophesy. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. And then for us too, as men of God open up themselves, including me to speak to you, as much as you love and respect us, make sure that you trust God for grace as much as possible don't idolize the prophetic the prophetic is not Jesus the prophetic is a system of advantage that reveals Jesus when you place your faith entirely in the prophetic you are an idol worshiper even if it's genuine prophetic our faith should be on Jesus the Bible calls Jesus not the prophetic the author and the finisher of our faith are we together now let me speak over your life you don't have to kneel or stand just believe I've been commanded to bless and he has granted grace and I want you to believe believe we have been commanded to bless I've told you what it does we can take advantage of time and program spiritual possibilities I decree and declare in the name of Jesus for as many who will believe as many whose hearts will be open between now and December 31st may my God give you a reason to laugh may my God give you a reason to laugh may my God give you a reason to laugh number two every long-standing issue that has been around your life and your family and has refused to bow to the name of the Lord I'm declaring some of you in a matter of days that situation comes to an end number three please receive this one I want to speak over your finances I truly got up this morning and I was concerned and burdened in my heart there are many people right now who are dying of high blood pressure they love the Lord pastors individual but this money thing there are people who are already at the corridors of compromise because of tea and bread business did not seem to work this year there are couples that are about to tear apart right now and it's because of money let me speak over your life in the name that is above all names hear me anyone here who is in any financial condition that is for shame and for reproach in the name of Jesus come out of it now 
by the ministry of destiny help us come out of it now I speak to every family here that all you have seen in your family is crying and languishing in the name that is above all names I open you up to a season of laughter There are family members that have not seen eyeball to eyeball in the name of Jesus. May the reconciler in this season bring reconciliation. Hear me. I am led to specially, I'm sensing in my spirit now to pray for couples that have been far apart, either because of visa issues, someone, husband is in America, wife is in Nigeria for four years. They've not seen themselves, they've not seen their children. In the name of Jesus, if there is anyone like that under the sound of my voice, I declare supernaturally, may the Lord bring connection. Anyone here carrying the cause of death you are already seeing dead people in your dreams you are already having all kinds of demonic destructive things listen listen hold on please my apologies for taking your time do you know in the last three weeks one of the case the case that I've seen that in my email and text messages is people having breathing problems somebody just gets up and we're not talking covid oh you can't breathe again let me pray for someone if there is any manifestation of the spirit of death translating to any cardiovascular disease to cut short your life i decree and declare be free from it now koinonia hear me your sleep is not for death you will not die in your sleep your travel is not for death. You will not die on the road. Please help them. The prophetic. Every hand that has been brought down in shame and you are saying, Lord, will I remain like this? Prophetically, I hold your hand. I lift it up. May it remain lifted forever. Anyone here having a court case or any legal issue that is about to eat up your family by all means I prophesy favor and mercy for you yes. hallelujah anyone here called barren that your womb has refused to take in I don't care what the medical condition is in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit I speak over you between now and the end of this year may a miracle start in your life please be patient I don't know who has forgotten you and because they forgot you all kinds of needless hardship some of you are surrounded by people that if they were led by God to remember you the truth is that shame will be rolled away from your life any spirit that has made them forget you in the name of Jesus right now I open the book of remembrance And for any one of you who has misused opportunities that were once opened because of carelessness and now that door is closed, I prophesy restoration for you. Please hear me. Any altar and any coven and any shrine carrying anybody's name or any family to say you will not rise that in this December for you it will be tears while others are laughing I call upon my God in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy may that altar catch fire now <laughs> hallelujah two more speakings and we're done hear me there is a spirit that always leads men to trouble. You get up in the morning in peace. You will just go somewhere you are not supposed to go. And you just see police come and they say, everybody here, 
just go to the police station why when you get there it will tell you can i tell you the truth he says lead us not into temptation is that in your bible lead us not into temptation I know people who were minding their business. Someone came and said, let me introduce you to one business somewhere. They didn't know it was fraud. They sincerely just came because they wanted to make meaning. Right now, they are in trouble. Anything that is a temptation, anything that is the devil directing you to put you in trouble, right now, make a U-turn spiritually. Make a U-turn spiritually. Hear me? Every transaction, every connection, every fraternity with troublemakers that can implicate you legally, can implicate you spiritually, can bring reproach to your name and your family. May my God take you far from it. Yeah. Hallelujah. The final prayer now that I pray for you. I'm praying whether you have children or not anybody under your care is your child can i tell you you will not use your money to manage evil yeah. there are people just when families are ready to rise you will hear that their child is in police station you will hear that someone is sick you heard the story of i think someone the lady who was healed here i know a bit about these kidney things and let me tell you when you have a loved one that has a kidney situation be ready to put between 10 to at least 15 million to manage them and that not even with a guarantee they will survive i'm saying it again every trap of the enemy to bring joy and sadness to your family to your life to your children let it be averted finally right now for some of you it is with your own eyes your own ears and your own mind god will use to prophesy to you <laughs> it will not even be another prophet you will go to lie down and what you wanted to meet someone to show you my god will show you using your own faculties me some of you you will be praying and the spirit of prophecy will come on you and you will start prophesying when you are done praying you will see that that prophecy was for you let me add one more prayer there are some of you who truly need an encounter with human vessels you have encountered the prophecy of scripture but you have been afraid because there are all kinds of people playing gimmicks i want to pray a special prayer for you the prophetic voice that god needs to lead you to so that you will hear to give you accuracy and precision i call upon god between now and the end of december i connect you to that prophetic voice shout a loud amen i connect you to that prophetic voice listen ladies and gentlemen i can tell you this for free the day you actually encounter a man that god has helped with the prophetic with character to help you and give you perspective in five minutes the confusion of 10 20 50 years the blueprint of your destiny can be opened like you open a room that has been locked for a long time i'm saying it one last time you don't need to meet everybody you have been meeting people not sent to you even though they are accurate he said there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent just because a man can